It's simple. By the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to start automating your email marketing. When using Zapier and Google Sheets and your email marketing provider, we can do some pretty crazy stuff. So you're telling me all I have to do is watch this video and I'll start automating parts of my business? Yes, let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. This is gonna be an exciting video here. I'm on Zapier's channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Corbin. Check the description down below. You're gonna get a free Zapier automation link. The one we make today is gonna be in the description down below. So you can just add it directly to your Zapier profile and get going right away. So let me do the heavy lifting. I'll do the heavy lifting. We're gonna go ahead and create this Zap together so you can understand intuitively what changes you can make to it, what it can even do, and how to even approach it. For the automation you're about to see today, it can work with any email marketing app. And as you know with Zapier, there is a ton to choose from. In today's video, we're gonna be using MailChimp to showcase it. All right, enough talking. Let's actually jump into what we're building today. What we're building is going to be an automation that starts at the top of the funnel. So in this example, our automation is gonna be a form that you fill out, but this could be applied to any context. We're gonna be using interfaces in today's video, but you could in theory use Google Sheets, Typeform, or anything of that realm. The idea here is this, we're gonna receive data on a business, and based off the data and what we know about that business, we're gonna be able to push them to specific email marketing campaigns that are relevant to us. Furthermore, we're gonna create a Google Sheet that's going to store this data as well, so we can reference it later, understand more about the business, and everything above the board. Let's go ahead and get going here. So I'm gonna use Zapier interfaces. Think of this like you're basically building landing pages and websites and it connects to automations. We're gonna hit start from scratch. Building your interface. As I went over before, this is gonna be any way that your business currently collects data. This could be a Google Ads campaign for all I know. We're gonna go ahead and create this form, we'll say add. With this form, let's go ahead and add our fields that would be relevant for us to care about depending on how we wanna market our emails. Coming over to my Google Sheet here, I'm gonna have four major data points. Business name, business email, business size, and interested promotions. Let's add a field. We're gonna call this business name. We'll do short text. We're gonna hope that the business name isn't like the whole alphabet. We'll say required, insert field. Now in this form, we can simply use this little button right here, drag it above here, because you kinda wanna start the business name, so I know who you are. Then we're gonna do an email. Let's add another field. We'll do business size. We'll use a drop down. For the drop down options, we're gonna put in each option that the user can choose. So for us, we'll do one to 10. We'll do 11 to 500 and then 500 plus. For this edit, we're gonna say required, insert field. And then the last piece of data here that we're gonna do is interested in promotions. We're gonna make this a checkbox, add field, checkbox. And we'll say interested in our promotions. And then default value, we'll have it unchecked, required, it's your field. Here we go. The way we're going to structure this video is that the major variable that's going to identify whether a user goes down path A or path B when it comes to our email marketing is going to be the business size. Knowing this though, you can go ahead and set that variable to whatever it may be. For example, your variable on whether to send this email newsletter campaign or this email newsletter campaign could be the income of the business that you find out, or alternatively, the location of the business or the type of business, anything you think of. With all this filled out, we're good to go. Hit the link. I'm gonna go ahead and put some data here that we can start using together. Let's fill it out. Jim's Bakery. Y'all nev never been to Jim's Bakery? I got good bagels. I usually like my bagels, poppy seed, some cream cheese. Definitely gotta be toasted. You gotta be toasted. It's gotta be toasted. That little crunch. Email is gonna be jimbakery at gmail.com. For the business size, we'll go ahead and say one to 10. Interested in our promotions, we'll hit checkbox here and we'll hit submit. So now that we have some data to play around with, we can go ahead and set up our next piece of logic. Coming over to the zap section, we're gonna create a zap. Our trigger is gonna be a form submission by interfaces. If you're using a different type of way of receiving this data, Google Ads, Google Form, Type Form, anything of that manner, that would be your trigger. Choose an event. Form submission created. Continue. Let's choose the interfaces that we just did together. For now, it's just called New Interface. Our page, page, and form. With all that selected, let's hit continue. And here we go. We got our test data that we can start messing around with. When playing around with apps and automations, I always suggest doing some test data do a quick run through so that when you make it live, everything works good. Now that we have our underlying data, let's go ahead and do two major things here. One, let's put it in our Google Sheets, save it for reference. And two, let's send Jim down the right way on our email news campaign. Let's go to actions. We're gonna do Google Sheets. In Google Sheets, we'll say create spreadsheet row. Continue, choose your account. Once you got that, hit continue. Choose your drive, my Google Drive. Choose your spreadsheet. So I went ahead and made a fake company name called the Best Cafe Ever LLC. We'll just say they're a marketing company. That's why Jim is reaching out in this context. Why is it called the Best Cafe Ever, Corbin? Because it's the best cafe ever. There's no other reason. They got good Americanos, no cream, no sugar. Wake you up, keep it hot, not iced. Let's go. For the worksheet, we'll do sheet one. And boom, since we set up the structure in our Google Sheet, it already knows the data. It already knows your columns. Therefore, it's very easy for us to add the relevant information we want to add there. Let's real quickly rename this zap. 
we're gonna say automate email marketing. Hit enter. For the business name, we're gonna choose the business name. We'll do business name, Jim's Bakery. There we go. We'll do business email, jimsbakery at gmail.com. Business size, one to 10. And finally, interested in promotions. True or false? Since I checkboxed it, true. Two things I wanna point out. Don't worry about it saying form data, semicolon, business name, semicolon, Jim's Bakery. The only thing that's gonna show up when it goes to the Google Sheet is gonna be Jim's Bakery. This is purely for us just to see like, what is this variable? Where does it come from? Let's hit continue here, test, and you'll see it on the other side. Continue, test, boom. We got all that information. Therefore, every single time an individual fills out that form, it's gonna be automatically placed here for context and later use. Now that we got that out of the way and we have the ability to start collecting data within our Google Sheet about relevant leads, let's learn our next step here when it comes to email marketing. Now there's two ways we can approach this. The first way is I guess set a path logic here where basically if they say true to promotions, we go down that path or alternatively, if they say false, we go down that path. But to keep it simple, we're gonna do a filters block whether or not to send them in our email newsletter campaign. We're gonna add a new block here, which is filter by Zapier. And what is great about blocks that are native to Zapier is they don't cost you a single dime. Free use, no task, don't worry about it. We're gonna say only continue if interested in our promotions, and the answer is true, exactly matches true. Basically, if they checkbox, yes, we'll send them down this path. If they say no, we won't. Continue, and then you, what you'll see is a green light here saying, yeah, the, the Zap would have continued. Now that we added that filter step to identify whether even to continue with this automation when it comes to providing them with our email marketing, we're gonna add some logic here that's going to know whether Jim is a one to 10 business, 11 to 500 business, or 500 plus. Now, one great way we can do this is use a pass block that will identify the specific variable that we care about and then send the user down a specific direction. But in this video, I wanna share this template with you. So we're gonna use some chat GBT logic. And the logic I'm about to show you can be applied to anything. So it's a win-win. Let's add that block. We're gonna do chat GBT. Select, we're gonna do an event of conversation. Choose your account. Now, before we add this prompt, let me go ahead and show you the last step of this automation. And this will make a lot more sense. So the last step here is going to be actually subscribing Jim to our newsletter. So currently we're using MailChimp. We're gonna hit add here. With MailChimp, we set up two tags, such as medium business and small business. This is gonna be associated with our underlying input here, which was one to 10 would be small business, 11 to 500 would be medium business, and then obviously 500 plus would be an enterprise level business. With these tags though, we can actually leverage which type of newsletter campaign we would wanna to send to Jim. If Jim's a medium sized business, the type of emails that we send them might be a lot different than if Jim is a small business. So let's go ahead and create this event. We're gonna say add update subscriber, continue. We're gonna choose our audience here. We're gonna choose our subscriber email here, which will be from the form of submission. And coming down here, which is probably the important part to identify here is the tags. This is what's gonna allow us to send the user down different logic in our MailChimp. Now let's go ahead and set up the logic so we know whether it's a small business or medium business that's coming in. Let's go to ChatGPT here. In the user message, we're gonna simply say, based on this business size, semicolon, parentheses, it will provide the business size that we received from the form, which for us is one to 10. Please match to the specific business size. I'm gonna to go to make sure to leave this prompt in the description down below so you can use it as well. And we're gonna simply do this. Also, as a side note, the prompt itself can be anything, right? It's the variable that you care about in this context. So for us, it's business size. Do you care about business income, location, et cetera? One to 10 equals small business. 11 to 500 equals medium business. And finally, 500 plus equals big business. 500 plus equals big business. Knowing this, all we need to do is simply ask, I'll put the size of the business, no text before or after. With this filled out, we're going to make a memory key here. We'll do MailChimp tag. This is gonna ensure consistent outputs. We'll keep with the model 3.5, continue and test this action. And from that input of one to 10, we got our answer here which is the reply of small business, which is great. That means we don't have to set up a pass block and we can actually jump right to the value point here, which would be adding our subscriber. So if I go to account here and I go to action and I come down here to tags, I choose custom, I go to conversation in chat GBT and I come down here to reply. This means that when a user fills out this form, goes through this workflow, is identified as a medium sized business, we'll add the tag medium sized business within our MailChimp audience. For us though, it's small business. We're gonna continue here, test this step. What you'll notice is we'll come through our tags here, hit view, and does Jim exist? Jim exists. So we got Jim here, and this is great. 
So what we can do from here is simply add Jim to a specific newsletter and a specific flow depending on that variable of business size. In Zapier, we can set up an automation that kicks off this journey or alternatively use a MailChimp automation like email tagged customers. That concludes today's tutorial. You can go ahead and get this exact Zap in the description down below for free. Add it to your Zapier profile. See if you like it. See if you like the flow. In addition, make sure to like it's completely free. Make sure to subscribe to this channel as you're going to see a lot more in-depth tutorials like this of stuff you can start automating within your business. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.